Hi, my name is Christy. Welcome back to my channel. So I've done it again. I've gone on vacation and brought back some vacation weight. So instead of having these extra pounds on film, this will be the last time you see this mug, this video, I'm going to do another DIY alterations video for you. So this is another bridesmaid dress that had a gaping armhole. You could uh, see everything <laughs> straight on through. And also a hem because, you know, bridesmaid dresses are just never the right length, but I'm going to gloss over that one. Mostly focus on the gaping armhole issue. I don't know what this is that I'm doing here. Please consider subscribing to my channel, like this video and hit that bell for notifications. If you're ready, I'm ready. I'm so excited. Thanks so much for being here. had the lovely Kiana try on her bridesmaid dress and evenly marked with clips how much I needed a take in at the seams. And I pinned up the unavoidable hem situation that comes with every single bridesmaid dress. Click the upper right corner or check out the description box for a more in-depth hem tutorial. I am basically treating this as a dart where the clips gradually taper smaller towards the apex. And hello, yes, every lady needs a little extra support on an open back dress. These little babies will be hidden between the two layers. Luckily on this dress, the lining layer and the outer shell were not attached. So I was able to easily access the inside by just turning the outer shell layer inside out. This makes it much easier to mark with fabric chalk where the clips are rather than having to open up a seam. I'm just reaching inside so that I can feel where the clips are so I can hold them in place while I chalk their position. Once adequately chalked, release the clips. The marks look real sketchy, so I just take a ruler to try to straighten them out while keeping the curve. This is probably the most difficult part of this entire project, which is just pinning the dart together. Line up and pin so that they hit the chalk lines on both sides. Keep adjusting the pins as you go, making sure that you are A, only pinning the outer shell, and B, making sure that the dart lines match. When you get to the armhole seam, it probably won't line up perfectly, but make sure that the seams are as close as possible and then continue pinning over to the lining side so that it flows seamlessly from the outer shell to the lining. And then once you're happy with your pins, you can sew continuously from one end to the other. Although I do like to do a quick check by turning it right side out just to make sure that everything is lining up correctly before sewing. Start stitching at the original seam so that it blends beautifully and keeps the integrity of the original dress shape. And when you reach the end, once again, blend back into the original line of stitching. Turn it right side out and double check your work to make sure that there are no weird bumps or pulling from the outside. If all looks well, then you can safely cut away the excess fabric. Here I'm adding just a quick line of understitching to make sure it lays nicer along that seam. The original dressmaker finished the raw edges with a line of stitching. Therefore, I have continued that line of stitching along the new seam just to make sure it does not unravel. It is amazing how important ironing is to finishing a project. And if you have a tailor's pressing ham, use that to iron these curves. And be sure to test the fabric on a corner before using any steam to make sure it can withstand the heat. Give the seams and that armhole a really good pressing. Last step is to sew in the girls. I've marked their placement at the top and bottom. These are just hand sewn onto the seam flaps so that no stitches show from the outside. I hope you've enjoyed this quick gaping armhole tutorial and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future DIY projects. 
Enjoy the final reveal.